wonder who's going to show up today. The ATF, the CIA. Well, you never know. Something good might happen today. Hmm? Yeah. You know, it's it's a little early in the relationship for you to be uh, acting like I'm invisible. I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. sorry. I'm just thinking about what happened yesterday. About what happened yesterday morning. It I just understand. wasn't the Thanksgiving that I wanted, you know? I... This is a new holiday for me. I, I just thought we'd come up with some of our own, you know, traditions. Yeah, right, right, right. Having the FBI over wasn't at the top of my list. Why don't you have some coffee, huh? And I keep thinking about the kids. It's great coffee. And I just thought oh, I was being nice so smart, you know, good. suggesting that Sam spend time with Mara and Shane. I, I Did I know they were going to be a pot mix? No. Well, I got to tell you something I knew. I mean, I didn't foresee the search warrants or anything like that, but try the croissant. How could you be so calm? I've had a lot of practice. I've been a parent for about a hundred years. Uh, I'm concerned about what went on, and I want to hear what the kids have to say. And oh. yeah, I'm a little angry with them. But, but see, today, my mind is on something uh, much, much bigger, something much more important than that. I mean, at least for now. Us. Oh, on a normal day, that would be so great. But it's just so yeah, crazy but, but right you see, now. No, no, no. This is, this is a, a special morning for us. This, this very moment is special if you just look at it in the right way see that's what's so frustrating i i have i have tried so hard to give you a kind of calm mm -hmm. rich fulfilling life you never had with reva you know to show you what a wonderful future we can have together yes and yes. then i just see, go and I'm spoil everything by pulling a reva you know bringing sam into the mix and churning everything up like she always does and then then she gets to blast me uh, for it i mean <laughs> you want to talk about ironic and yeah. humiliating for, forget reva Okay, forget Sam, forget everything and everyone for now. Honey, I wish I could. Honey, uh, I think I brought you something that will help you. All you have to do is look down between the coffee and the waffles. And here is the official FBI list of everything they confiscated. Oh! Computers, CDs, files, keyboard, they really gave you the full court press. Yeah, so picture this. While the kids are off having a high old time in Chicago, we're back here in Bootlegville dealing with search warrants and them taking everything out of here electrical that they can get their fingers on. Copyright infringement. Just when I thought your family couldn't surprise me any longer. This isn't like something I expected. Okay, okay. Well, why didn't you call me sooner? Because there wouldn't have been any place for you to stand, literally. There were so many people in this house that it made that cargo container on the ship from San Cristobal look like a suite at Towers. Besides, I, I didn't really know if there was anything you could do. Well, you know, you know, see, I love when you underestimate me. You know it makes it a challenge. David Lemus, this is the uh, the head guy, right? Uh-huh. Let me look into it. I'd appreciate that, because the kids are in a lot of trouble. Uh, Reva, does this happen in your life all the time, or did I just happen to stumble across your path at a particularly oh, interesting please. point? please. You're not exactly the bland, nothing-ever-happens-to-me type of guy. Okay, okay. I, I Maybe I was uh, hoping a little bit that we could, uh, you know, sneak away somewhere, you know, together. A little bit of R&R. But I guess if you left town now, it would be more like a rest and relaxation, right? <laughs> I love you. If you only meant that. Well, I <clears throat> hope you're hungry. No, thanks. <sighs> Have some... Uh, some business I have to attend to before we fly home to San Cristobal. I assume you are flying home with me. Cassie, I'm doing everything I can to locate Lieutenant Rock. Why? Well, because he'll give me the answers I need. And what difference does it make if you get answers? The damage has already been done, Richard. No, you're right. 
Which is why I have to do something. Because I'm, I'm finding it difficult, Cassie, to lie awake every night in bed wondering if you'll ever lie next to me again. Someone tried to destroy us, Cassie. Mark. No, not Rourke. Rourke was just a mercenary. No, someone else is behind us. Morning, all. I trust you both well? All reasonably so, at least. I uh, have some business to attend to before we leave. Uh, you'll be all right? Yes. Well, perhaps I should leave as well. I'm sure you have many preparations to make for your return to Sacramento. Have you ever seen Richard this unhappy? No, I can't say that I have. His mood is understandable, though, given the circumstances. Circumstances? No, that's a word I'm starting to hate. You know, uh, Richard and I only wanted to have a child together. As any other young couple in love might. It was our dream from the beginning. And someone went to a lot of trouble to wreck that. First, by making us think that we couldn't have children. And then when it was obvious that I was pregnant, leading Richard to believe that Rourke was the father. Now, that takes a special person to do something that vicious. Who? Who do I know like that? Any answers? I was hoping you could give me one. Was it you? Edmund? Me? Yes, you. It's a straightforward question. Did you do this? Were you the one to set us up to make Richard think I betrayed him? I almost wish that I were. And I wouldn't disappoint you. So you had nothing to do with this? Richard must have evoked the spirit of Edmund the demonic. No, Cassie. As guilty as I may be of other crimes, in this case, I'm innocent. So who did it then? Well, I've actually given the matter a great deal of thought, but I'm sure you'll be surprised by my conclusions. Try me. It's no great secret that Richard and I enjoy a strained relationship at best. And given some of my actions in the past, I'm the first person he's likely to suspect when something nasty happens. That being said, while I don't know who's behind the conspiracy, I do think its ultimate target is me. What did you say? Well, it stands to reason, Cassie. Say a palace insider, some ambitious member of council, perhaps, was seeking to eliminate me in order to fill the power void left by my absence. They conceive a plan to drive a wedge of mistrust between you and Richard, ruining what should be the happiest time of your lives, and then simply sit back and watch suspicion follow its natural course. To you. Hasn't it? So I'm pregnant with the baby that Richard didn't think was his. Our lives are falling apart. We can't even come up with the words to say to each other. All this damage has been done, it's all about you. That is a distinct possibility. Do you really think you're that important, or do you just want to be? There are very few lengths to which people will not go in the name of power. And only as big a narcissist as you could put a spit on like this. I am a narcissist. You're quite right there. However, you have a great deal to learn about the nature of life surrounding the throne. Well, I'm finding out more every day. I'm sorry. Please don't interpret this as an insult, Cassie, but your faith in the simplicity of things is really quite touching and appealing. But in the end, I'm afraid it is also 
naive. Well, you know what, Edmund? You're right, I had faith in human nature. But I lost my innocence because I met you. And my questions are still unanswered. Excuse me. Yes. Listen, I can't go to San Cristobal this weekend. I, I can't even leave town. What trouble have you gotten yourself into now? Well, it's not me. Susan's the one in trouble. But since I'm her guardian, the FBI says that I... What happened to her? Is Susan all right? As far as I know, yeah. But uh, apparently her and her friends bootlegged a music CD, and uh, that's really messy. I understand. Look, Jim, I feel I strained your hospitality at Thanksgiving dinner. That was wrong, and I'm going to do better. I don't want to abandon my friendship with Susan, but you'll be pleased to hear that I will be limiting my social contact with the LeMays from this point on. Is this some kind of joke? I'm not completely insensitive to the feelings of others. As for your trip to San Cristobal, we'll reschedule when you are able to travel. In the meantime, call me if there's anything I can do for Susan. Yeah, well, thanks, Edmund. Uh, I'll keep in touch. Now, if I can only put my other problems aside so easily. Open it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I just don't want to rush this because, see, this is one of those once-in-a-lifetime moments. Uh. I hope. Oh gosh, Josh. Oh, I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Neglected, are you? No, I'm just uh, curious about what happens next. That's all. Oh, anything I expect. Just not yet. How did I know that was coming? <laughs> Come on, Noah. Seriously, my life is like one big swirl right now. Oh, it's something unusual for you, huh? I don't even know where I am right now, but all I do know is that wherever I am, I, I'm glad that I'm there with you. Reva, that, that is the sweetest cop-out I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm serious. I mean, when I'm with you, it's, it's fun, and it's easy, and it's satisfying, and it's intense. And that's a problem? No, that's a thrill. Oh. What's on your mind? I can see the wheels turning. Well, you know, I was just thinking about uh, you and Josh and your um, checkered past and how you've uh, broken up before. Yeah, and? And I was just wondering if what you're really saying here is that you're just um, waiting it out to the next big... Josh Riva reunion. No, 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 no. No, Josh and I are finished. And on that front, I know exactly where I am. Oh, oh, and, 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 and 
where you are with me has absolutely nothing to do with Josh. Oh, no, it does. Aha. Uh -huh. But not the way you think. In the past, when Josh and I went our separate ways, we were both guilty of using people. Not on purpose. But still, we hurt a lot of people. People who didn't deserve to be hurt the way they were. Well, maybe because you were still in love with each other and not with them. Well, or we weren't ready to move on. And are you now? Yes. But it, it still is an adjustment, you know? I mean, I... I just want to be sure of how I feel before I commit to anything else. Because I don't want to hurt you. I want to protect what we have because it's good. And I don't want to hurt you the way I've hurt other people. Because you're important to me. <laughs> what would be so funny? Riva Lewis, mm. you are so full of yourself. Full of myself? What do you mean? Well, look, Riva, I, I, I know that you can be dangerous. Now, I've seen you in action with some of your exes, you know, Josh, Billy, Buzz, Woody. But, um, I'm not, uh, any one of them. I can handle you. What a charming phrase. Well, I mean, I, I proved it, haven't I? Uh, on land, on sea, in the air. <laughs> you mean you're still standing up, is that what you mean? Well, the point is I can take care of myself and you if, uh, if you'd let me. And if you were ready for it, of course. You're quick. Well, consider the company. <laughs> Riva, um, look, I'm a, I'm a grown man, so give me some credit and uh, play fair. And uh, while you're at it, give yourself a little credit, too. Translation? Well, there's a chance. A slim one, but uh, a chance that um, you might be evolving. Into what, dare I ask? Into a gorgeous, funny, brilliant lady who might be able to share her life with someone else other than Josh Lewis. It might be possible. Good. So now what? Hmm? You wait for me to turn into the new and improved Riva? If she does. I have no timetable. Like I said, I'm just curious about what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I think I know what. Mm. Mm. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Perfect timing. You know something? I can't wait to see you up on that stage because you are going to be the best angel that, that Bethlehem has ever seen. Will they slap? Uh, not, not much, no. Just, but a little. A little. Well, here's how I'm going to sing. Oh, now that, that is an angel. Look at <laughs> you. You look beautiful. Give me a twirl. Give me a little twirl there. No. That is great. And look, light. Oh. Uh, kind of. <laughs> Don't worry, sweetie. We'll get those to work by the time the play comes, okay? My dad gave these to me, but Mary doesn't get to have light. Well, Mary has a few other things going for her, though. Oh, yeah, a couple. You know what? Being that this is the first time that I'm going to see you in a school play since we're a new family, 
I think I might sneak into the school tonight and save two front row seats. No, you'll need more. For my dad, Harley, Grandpa Allen, and Susan, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, sw sweetie, um, could you do me a big favor and go up and check on the baby, huh? Mm -hmm. Could you? Okay. And, and don't, don't bend those wings. <laughs> I know, Mom. I need them to fly, remember? I feel so blessed that I can even have a chance to make that costume. It was just a few months ago we didn't know that she was going to make it to Christmas Day. Nothing about being in the school play. Yeah, we are blessed. We are. And I know that you're upset about Susan. <laughs> oh, honey, nothing new there. You know, I, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. You know, every time things start to calm down around here, something else happens. And the ante keeps going up. Now my teenage daughter is wanted by the FBI. But Susan is only 14 years old, and, and any judge is going to see that this is just a, a, a youthful mistake, especially when Ross points it out, which he will. Everything is going to be okay. I love it when you talk to me like that. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, because somehow I always believe you. And I love you. And I need you, and I adore you, and you know the list. But I don't get tired of hearing it. You know, you're not the only lucky one in this house. Because I get to walk around here being a husband and a daddy, and, well, maybe soon I'll be a daddy again. I'm really getting used to the idea of a new baby coming into this house, and I got to tell you, I like it a lot. Mm, gee, maybe, maybe we should start practicing, huh? Yeah? Well, oh, listen, uh, good news, and from Edmund of all people. It seems that he's finally got it through his royal skull that uh, he's been spending a little too much time at the LeMays. So he assured me that he's going to back off. Did he happen to say anything to you about this? Uh, I, uh yes, yeah. yes. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, he did, yeah. yeah. It's great news, isn't it? Kind of like an early Christmas present. Which do you think is better, kissing or jewelry? Um, <clears throat> well, experiment. Kiss. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> I gotta look at the ring. It's so beautiful. Kiss. Oh, you're really doing well. <laughs> the ring. Okay, kiss. Oh, yeah, I figured this out. <laughs> Can I have both? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to kiss the ring? Well, you've kissed everything else. Thank you. Uh, I know. I think we got to go back to kissing everything else. Oh, come here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's here. Come on in. Oh. <laughs> hey, you sure you don't want to split? Yeah, like no. I asked you to so that nobody hey, sees us together. Hey, relax. Everything's cool, okay? Well, cool is a good thing. Oh. Hey, gang. Hey. Hey. How are you? Look at this. We have company, huh? Hey. You know, actually, we've been waiting for you. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. so nice. Hi, Dad. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Hi son. Hi, Mr. Hi there. <laughs> oh, we made really good timing coming back. Well, that's good. You know what? You should sit down. Take a seat. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't wait to hear about your trip to Chicago. I bet that was cool, too. Yeah, that's good. You should you should get comfortable. Yeah, especially after all that, that fun. You must be tired. So, tell us about your trip. Yeah. Um, well, it, it was definitely uh, cool. It was a, yeah. a real good time. And by the way, Mr. Lewis, um, Mara, she had no idea I was coming with. I jumped in at the last minute. But let me tell you, she's she's something else. Tony. <laughs> you know, you should have you seen her at the colleges. She's a real 
student. Yeah. Ah. The University of Chicago was so awesome. <laughs> That's a great school, isn't it? How have yeah. things been here? <laughs> oh, you know, everyone's just been so punchy with the activity. But that's how it is at Thanksgiving. You know, it's a little crazy. Which is why it was great for us to go visit schools. Even though the campuses were kind of empty, it was still cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of cool, any other coolness you'd like to relate? Tony took us to a really nice Spanish restaurant, yeah. and it was actually really cheap. It was reasonable. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what I mean, yeah. Well, the black bean soup was actually, was the real deal, right, Catalina? Oh, yeah. see, it was very good. That's nice. Oh, what, what else did you do? I, what, what did you do at night? Nothing, just hung out, nothing major. Did you have plenty of money? Plenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely plenty. Yeah, we were cool. Guys. Yeah. yeah nice. <coughs> Actually, I, I, I don't even think we needed any no, more. No, no, no. We're not. We're fine. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. That's just yeah. terrific. And how was the ride up? Great. <laughs> really? I mean, it, it's okay. Yeah, it's too bad, isn't it, that there weren't more students at the campuses that you went to visit? Why? What do you mean? Well, I, I can just imagine, you know, the reaction you might have gotten from them, you know, pulling up in a, in a great big limousine. Hmm? Was it a black limousine or was it a white limousine? I was trying to tell you guys. <laughs> We're toast. Uh, no FBI agents lurking about, I hope. Uh, no, no, they're they're gone. I hope I haven't disturbed you. That might be something better said to Cassie. Ah, yes. Well, may I come in, or would you prefer to flay me alive out here in the doorway? Thank you. You know, Richard, trust is everything to Cassie. She always trusts the people she loved, and she loved you more than life itself. Really, please. What? Did you really expect to hear anything else from me? Actually, I'm not here to see you. What? Right, I came to find Noah. I called the hospital. They said that you were here. I'm glad to find you. What's going on, Richard? I need your help. I'm due to fly to San Cristobal in a few hours, and, uh, well, I need someone here to help spearhead an inquiry of sorts. You got it. Uh, where do you want me to start? Lieutenant Rourke. He's a direct link to the person who was trying to destroy my life and what I found. All right, uh, Richard, uh, what else can you uh, give me on work here besides the basics? Well, not much, I'm afraid. Uh, we, we did a background check, of course, when he was under consideration for the position of Cassie's bodyguard, but, uh, but well, we didn't find out anything unusual. He was who he said he was. At least on paper. Uh, no, uh, no criminal record, uh, drinking, problems, no. gambling, nothing? No, no. Well, uh, there was a rumor being bandied about uh, that Rourke was somewhat of a womanizer, but uh, it was never substantiated. Well, you seem to buy it. Uh, uh, Richard, uh, you, you also said that uh, work was a Navy SEAL, right? It, uh, it only ought to be possible to uh, pull his military records. We might be able to find something, you know, we can use there. Yes, good, good. Anything. As long as we get our hands on that man. I'll, uh, I'll do my best. I I'm sure you will, Noah. But I'm afraid failure is not an option here. I need you to cast the widest net possible for our friend, Mr. Rock. Uh, Richard, you want me to use the agency? Here we go again. If that's possible. I, I think I can uh, safely say that the agency will do everything in its power to support the best interests of San Cristobal, and failure for them isn't an acceptable option either. <laughs> I know I could count on you. No Thank problem. you. Nice to have friends in high places, eh? Yeah, so I'm finding out. Uh... Hello? You'll never guess who's sitting on the couch here. They're back? Oh, yeah, the whole gang is back from their very cool trip to the big city. Did you call Ross? Yes, Ross is on his way. I, I, in fact, I'm trying to assemble the whole gang that was at your house yesterday. Let's see, we got uh, Jim and Beth and Ray Santos. And I'm about to get Philip and Harley on the phone. Sounds like a party. 
Sounds like a lynching. Well, don't string anybody up until I get there. Who's that? Josh. Looks like our little bootleggers are back. And they're going to need people in high places, too. Ah, come on now. Let me drive you over. Richard, I'll, um, I'll call you uh, when I get to St. Christopher. All right. I, uh, assume you're taking Cassie back with you? Yes, I am. And I wish you both luck. All right, Josh. We're on our way. Um, oh, and do me yeah, a favor. Josh? Please, please oh, tell Susan okay. how much I'm looking forward to seeing her. Honey. Yeah. Thank you. What? She's going to tell you the same thing you told me. Yeah, but I wanted to hear it from... Okay, uh, are the kids all right? Kids are fine. And they'll probably stay fine until their parents get there. Although, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. They're probably not all like me. Some of the parents will probably be calm and full of forgiveness. But one thing I can guarantee you, honey, little Miss Susan is never going to be the same after I get through with her today. Because I have had it Philip, with that listen kid. to me. I have I had think it with her. You should let Jim deal with this. I'm begging you, please take a back seat on this one. Take a back seat? I should take a back seat. When I'm the one that got run over, I don't think so. That's why I think you should let me and Jim handle it. No, honey, you and Jim have been unable to control her thus far. And I have sat here, and I have listened to the deafening music, and the waves of obnoxious attitude, and I've said nothing. And that's fine. She's your kid. But when she knowingly and willingly breaks the law and uses my company's computers to do it, that's where I draw the line. I am not going to sit still for this. She crossed the line. Yes, at a dead run. At a dead run. At a dead run, but you know what? After all the garbage that this kid has pulled, and everything that we've had to endure, all the lip that she gives both of us, what do I do? I give her free access to the Spalding computers, and why do I do that? Because I want to be a good guy. I want to try to trust her. Well, you knew that was yeah. a risk. Well, not one that I thought would end with an FBI raid. Right. Don't, don't take this lightly. She is not going to get away with it. Buddy, she's out of control. She is way out of control, she, and Susan it's going to stop so right now. Out of control. You're yes, right. Yes. You're absolutely right. I am you right. You have. You have bent over backwards. I have to tried to, to bend over child. backwards for her, and so you know it. So much so that you should be crowned limbo king. I really believe that, honey. But the child is going to pay the price. And we can't do this. We have to handle this the right way. We're supposed to be adults here. In theory. Right? See, it's not, it's, it, it's not the theory part that I have the problem with. It's the in practice part that I have mm -hmm. the problem with. Okay, I know that this is serious, mm -hmm. and I do know it's not going to do any good if I go in there and I tear her head off the moment that it's I see her. It's not going to do any good like at all. Do. We can't go into the house like that. We I have know. to try to be a little mellow. Uh, I think mellow might be pushing it. But I promise you, I will do my best. Ingrid, we'll be back as soon as we can. Mellow? Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know, don't think you're fooling anybody. I'm on... What am I doing? What do you think you're doing? Now, the reason you don't want me to lay into her is so that you can have the fun laying into her. You know me so well, honey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you look as thrilled as we are. Yeah, it comes with the territory. Hello, yeah. George. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Come on. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Jim. Come on in. Hey, thanks. Susan? Beth would have come, but she's busy with the baby. Can I crawl under the couch now? Hello. Nice way to start Hi. a day. Hello. Well, I guess it could be worse. Where are they? Around the corner. They'll work out. They're like zombies. Okay, I'm scared now. I'm so grateful that I missed the teenage years of Dinah. Yeah, except for the fact that you have three almost teens at your home right now. Good Lord, I do, don't I? Yes, you do. Say a prayer. Yeah. All right, we will get started as uh, soon as Reva arrives. Actually, oops, sorry. Last but not least, be right back. Hi. Hi. Uh, did I miss anything? Yeah. Do you ever? Can I get anyone any coffee before we get started? Nice rock. You've been busy. I am not calling her mom. Mara, Shane, you need me on your side right now. You pipe down. 
I'd like to thank my children for introducing Catalina to the lifestyle of a young teenager in America. She didn't do anything. I keep saying that. Well, the FBI is not looking for her. What are you talking about, FBI? They paid us a visit. Yeah, all of us. They had search warrants and everything. You know, the computers and all those wonderful CDs you kids had gone. Confiscated. You're going to be charged with copyright infringement. In other words, bootlegging the music. That's so bogus. No, it isn't. It's a big deal, Sam. I would like one of you to tell us how and why we came to be here. I will. I think that's a very good move. Well, it just started because we wanted to go see a concert in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we told you no. Right. Which should have been enough. Except it seemed like such an arbitrary decision and totally unfair. So we came up with a plan. We? All right, I. The seed was planted by me. It was my idea. Pirating CDs. No, the liberation of music, Josh. Oh. Oh, come on. That's like saying bank robbery was an unscheduled transfer of assets. No, the record companies are the pirates and the robbers here. It, it only cost them... Look, don't you see? It only cost them a few more pennies to make a CD than a tape. But they can turn right around and sell that exact same CD for five times as much. It's a total ripoff. Do you think the musicians see any of that money? Sam, no. Come on. And the internet. Okay, let's talk about the internet. The record companies are upset about the people stealing their product. When the whole idea of the internet was that it was created to establish an open, free exchange of ideas. Accent on the free. I mean, the real idea here is that the record companies just want to censor us. Pure and simple censorship. I mean, sure, they want to throw in their obsolete concepts of control on a new and, by definition, uncontrollable medium. I mean, compared to what the big boys are up to, what we did is nothing. The total amount of money that you received from the sale was what? $3,500. No, it wasn't. Not really, because, see, I had 500 CDs, only... I didn't sell any of them. What? What? You gave us the money. It's bad enough. Don't try to back out of it now. Hey, Ray, if I wanted to back out, I wouldn't walk through that door. I would have bailed the second we hit town. Maybe you should have. Look, I didn't sell anything, okay? You can check my room. All 500 are there, except for one or two. I just said I sold them. The money I gave you guys was... was mine. Why did you do that? To impress Mara. Is that crime? No, but bootlegging is. And I have been in contact with the attorneys for new ground, and they are going to press charges uh, no, for the I, unauthorized I, sale of their music. Now, according to the FBI, this is not the first time this has happened in new ground, so their attorneys are just a little bent out of shape, and they are going to make an example out of all of you. Okay. So what happens now? Those of legal age go on trial. The minors, they go to juvenile court. And the parents share in the legal responsibilities for the actions of their children. Can you help us, Ross, if it comes to that? Yeah, I suppose I could. But at this point, you probably need God more than you need an attorney. This has been Guiding Light. Something strange is happening to Molly. I see dead people. And it may